Hello. I thought I'd make a video explaining how I uh, animated this this cute little cabbage girl that I have up on my screen here. Uh, I recently made a, a little hundred uh, frame cartoon of her uh, just kind of taking a few steps and moving her eyes and moving her head and arm and and that's about it. Not not exactly too complicated, but uh, you know this is teaching myself how to do cartoons, and I thought I'd cover how this was done. So. Uh, first things first is I had to draw my character. So this is the character. Um, I, I drew her in Inkscape. Um, and she, so she's made entirely out of scalable vector graphics. Uh, wasn't too complicated. I used uh, some of the guide systems in here. So, you know, I drew out guides like this to help me keep things straight so that, you know, I could line up her, uh, you know, line up her eye exactly, you know, even things like that, and then turned on snapping so that I could actually snap to some of these these grid lines. Um, so once I had her drawn, and you know, I, I, I mirrored things like the hands and whatnot, but uh, once I had her drawn, I decided I was going to separate her out into separate layers, and that's where we can see, I can turn off all these individual layers until there's nothing left. You know, I really started with the head and then worked on the mouth and eyes and uh, added the body in. And what I did is I then exported um, exported these into individual bitmaps. So despite the fact that it's a, a scalable vector graphic, I exported into bitmaps for use so that I'd end up with uh, actual like PNG files here of the individual components. Um, not too sure if this is the best way to do this or not. Oh, sorry, it took so long getting up there. But uh, it worked out for, for me making my animation. As I get more in depth in this, it might turn out to be a bad idea. We'll see. So anyways, those are the individual pieces of her. Now once I had those, I imported them into uh, Blender. Uh, sorry for typing my regular keyboard there. I'll, I'll use my uh, external keyboard from now on. I know it's a bit loud when I type on that one. Um, so anyways, Blender is a 3D animation suite. So despite the fact that it was mostly a 2D looking cartoon, uh, with a little depth in there. It's actually a 3D scene that I created. So um, uh, this looks like I brought one character in, but what I actually have here is I have all those individual bitmaps imported uh, as uh, separate files, or separate objects, really. In fact, the type of object they are, if I take out the texture, is all they are, like, you know, here's the mouth, for example, all it is is a plane. And they're all the same size plane. It makes it really easy to line up that way. Um, but of course, when I view them as textured, they have an alpha channel, and you kind of see right through her. So um, I also uh, made some of the objects parents of, of each other. So for instance, I have a um, I have this cabagella object, with this, which is actually just kind of an invisible circle right underneath her. Oops, if I click on the cabagella object down here that is uh, apparent to the whole thing. And um, uh, the children of that, the direct children anyways, are the head and the body, so that I can actually just move the head. Oops, excuse me, that time I had the body selected. The, the body and the head uh, independently, and it'll bring along all their respective parts. And then underneath that, I have all the components of the body and all the components of the head. So um, it's actually pretty, pretty simple the way this is set up, kind of straightforward here. Uh, Animating in Blender is is a uh, fairly simple when you get used to it, I, and I'm just now getting used to it. Uh, navigating in Blender that's a video for another day. How to actually control things and move around and set up a 3D scene. Uh, I I often say it takes about like a weekend to get used to the controls in Blender to just navigate around. So do take some time doing that. Um, but animating itself is pretty easy. I'm going to turn on uh, screencast keys, and this will allow me to, uh, it'll allow you to see what I'm typing down here in the lower right. So, um, using a numpad with Blender is very important because that gives you your different views. You can go straight on view, over top, you know, to the right. It allows you to, ch or and going right to the camera. It also allows you to change between uh, perspective and orthographic projections. So, um, which, all of which have their place and can be pretty useful. But uh, 
generally the way we see things as humans is with a perspective view. So perspective is the way you actually want to view it. And when you're viewing things through a camera, as long as your camera is set up to be perspective, it's going to view it as perspective. So you can see, you know, that, that these objects have depth as opposed to orthographic, which they do not. So I like looking through the camera's eyes. This is looking through the camera's eyes. Um, so one important thing to note is that uh, there's this timeline down here on the bottom. This timeline uh, has a bunch of keyframes set up for what's where. Uh, a keyframe is just a place where an object will be and how it will be oriented at a certain point in time. So let me go to, say, the actual uh, uh, overall Cabagella image, and you'll see that the overall Cabagella, that means that's our little character, that's our name, Cabagella, uh, between frames 0, at frame 0 she's exactly here, and at frame 50 she'll stand here. So let me actually uh, get out of the camera view so we don't move when I do that because the camera also moves. Uh, so 0 and 50. And the whole object will move uh, uh, linearly along that. And then at 50 it just stops because there's no more keyframes after that. So, um, And then of course I had to go to her individual feet and I set up keyframes for them of where that foot is supposed to be at time. And you can see that that's what makes her step like doing. And the same thing with uh, the pupils. If I highlight the pupils, you'll see the pupils. They start off kind of in the center, a little bit uh, looking down maybe. And they go off to the left. They shoot all the way back right. And they kind of roll up to the top. And then spend 60 frames just to hover down to the middle. And you can see these yellow markings down here in the timeline are the keyframes. So uh, that's how you do your animation. And all you do is you have to set the keyframes frames and then blender will calculate all the frames in between so it'll know where they are uh, and if you if you don't like what blender calculates then you better create a keyframe of what you actually want at that frame so that's animation as a whole and I can actually start and stop it by hitting uh, alt a and we can see our guy move and our camera also has keyframe position set up so you'll see if I were to highlight the uh, oops, I missed it there if I were to highlight my camera, you see it starts out at zero, goes to $100, two keyframes, so that it's just constantly zooming. And if I look through the camera's eyes, you'll see that we get that zoom effect. So um, I should show you a little bit of this in practice. In the video I had, uh, Cabagella actually moves her head. And in this one, uh, I don't have that. So let me go to the beginning here. Let me get into a decent perspective. And let me just select her head as a whole, and we're going to set up some keyframes for that. So. First things first, uh, we're at zero. I want her head to be right where it is at zero, so I'm going to hit I, and I'm going to add a lock road scale keyframe. Okay. And I know that she gets to where she's moving at 50, and her eyes move down here. I think at 70, I'm going to want to also hit another keyframe, so her head will stay relatively exactly where it's at for that keyframe. Now I'm going to go to 80. And I have her entire head selected, and I'm going to hit R for rotate. And I'm going to rotate her head down. Uh, let me actually just type it in negative 20 degrees. I think that's good. Kind of a creepy angle there, but I think it works. And um, so at frame 80, I want her head to be exactly there. So I'm going to hit my keyframe and save that. So now you see between frame 70 and 80, it calculated all the frames in between. Um, I want it to stay down there until frame 85. So at 85, I'm just going to go to 85. I'm going to hit, yep, the same one there. And then at 95, I'm going to take 10 frames back, going back to where it was. So I'm going to hit R again, and this time I'm going to hit positive 15. It should put it right back where it started. It didn't quite do that, did it? Oh, it wasn't 15. I know what it was. It's positive 20. There we go. I was off. And now again, I hit I, and that. Uh, allows me to save it as a lock rote scale, so location, rotation, and scale um, keyframe. And now we see she moves her head down, holds it there for five frames, then moves it back up at the same pace, and then another five frames of it just staying there. So as I play the whole thing, oops, I uh, hit the wrong button. There we, we see that she goes, moves down, her head tilts, and comes back up. Just a little, little wink and a nod, although I haven't done winking yet. So through the camera's eyes, that'll look like. Um, 
other than this, I just have to go and I have to actually render the animation with the animate, uh, the animation button here under the render tab. But that's that, that's a little complicated. This is the basics for how I bring in this character and how I animate her. Um, I hope that makes sense and uh, leave me any comments if you have any questions. So uh, thank you.